So in this video I want to look at replacing our background with something that looks a little bit more exciting and this will be done using something called a tile map. So I'm going to right click, insert a new object and scroll down until we get to tile map. We want to give it a name for multiple tile maps because I'm only just going to have one. I'm just going to insert this one just as it is. And as usual we get our crosshair and we click anywhere. Now by default construct will give us a tile map. Now what tile map is, is they're individual tiles that we can place down and we can pick which tile we want to place down and we can basically create a picture out of using these different squares and elements. Now there's lots of great sites where you can import different tile maps that other people have made so you don't need to worry about creating your own. So there's lots of options there. To use tile map and construct, once we've got it, we can just press exit and then we get this blue box up here. Now what we want to do is we want to be able to use this tile map now. So first of all, down here you should have an option to switch to tile map. I've not, so what I'm going to do is show you how you get that option if you've not got it. So go menu, view, bars, and tile map. And this brings it up, and all I'm going to do is just attach it to the middle here, this middle square. I'm just going to move this right up so I can see it, and we can move this out a little bit as well. So this is my tile map now. Now, this tile map is 32 by 32, so it's already at the correct size. But if you've got a smaller or bigger tile map, just edit these values here. Most websites will tell you what the size of your tile map is. So now we can start using this. So how do we use this? So first of all, I want the grass to be our background. So I'm going to use the paint bucket tool to do that for me. I can then use the square tool. So let's add in a river like so and then I can use this tool I want to add a bit more detail in so let's say I want to add a border around the river so I might want to zoom in so I want to zoom in make sure I'm off the tile map so let's click off that right click view zoom in and then we can start adding our details so again I'm going to just grab the items that I want. So I want this part of the river. And I'm just going to drag it down. And unfortunately, you'll see that this combines with this one. So I'm just going to go through and just combine that back. So that makes a little bit more sense. Like so. But depending on what you want, you could possibly find a tool that does it better. So we've got this one here. If I want just that bit of land. Um, if I want maybe a fence, I can have a corner of a fence here. Sorry, I'm not sure. I've got another bit that goes round like so, or we can just have our straight fence like this. So it takes a little bit of time to read a tile map. They can be a bit confusing at times. But once you get the hang of it, they can be quite easy to put in. So once we press play and we go into our world. Um, I'm not sure where my character is, but you can start to see our tile map is here. Now in terms of where my character is, it's actually hidden behind the tile map. So we want to click off the tile map, click on our background, and we're just going to change the Z order and send this to the bottom layer. Now our background's now here, and we don't want that, so we can actually just delete that. Uh, we'll keep on our border for now. Uh, in fact, we'll get rid of our border for now so we can see our fence, and now we can play it. So now we can see our character. Now currently our character is able to move freely around, and we might want to make it so our character can't go on the water, for instance, or not get past the fence. So how do we fix that? So we go back to our tile map, we click on the thing that we don't want them to get past, so let's click on this blue square for instance, and we can edit that particular tile. We want to make sure the hitbox is correct for that. So we've got that one there. We now want to also add in our behavior. So we can edit behavior and add the solid behavior. Now we're going to have a problem with this because our grass is also linked to that. So now we can't move. So what we need to do is go back to our grass tile that we had. I believe it was this one here. Edit tile and use collision off. 
now we can turn that off and now this no longer has collision but everything else does now the other issue we've got with this is just our fence so if we go to our fence I'm struggling to turn them you see that we're stopping quite early on the fence and my character is not able to get all the way to the end of the fence so we go back to our fence we'll take this one that we used edit tile and we're going to click on the hitbox and we're just going to make the hitbox the correct, uh, correct size so I think I've got the grid on so I'm going to turn the grid off and we're going to put the hitbox the right size now you might be thinking do you have to do this for every single tile yes if the tile is in a regular shape like this fence is where we only want this part of it you'd have to do that for each one which can be quite time consuming but once it's done it's done for all your tiles so let's go back to our fence now and you'll see that we can get right up to that piece of fence i'm just getting stuck on that corner fence because i've not set up the collision for that so tile mats they look a little bit complicated but once they're set up, obviously you'd want a smaller character for this certain tile set. Once they're set up, they can be a really nice way to create really fast and great looking levels.